Teapot alert. Many junior teapots have been involved in supernova-related accidents. Teapot Command has insisted on remedial courses on stellar astrophysics with optional modules in hyperspace cake baking. Using the leftovers of several unsuccessful teapot abductions, Teapot Labs have constructed the perfect scientist, a genius of the highest degree. Well, as it happens, I just traveled through time yesterday. Dr. Andy's Guide to Exploding Stars. You can do a calculation that sort of gives you a handle on, you know, how fast stars consume fuel and how long they live, but stars are kind of like dogs, like big dogs don't live as long as little dogs. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why that is, but stars seem to be the same way. The thing that uh, props up stars against collapsing from their own gravity is the pressure of the gas inside of it. As the star gets to the end of its life, it burns heavier and heavier elements uh, because gravity is all the time trying to crush it down. And as it exhausts one fuel, like say burning hydrogen to helium, then the star starts to shrink and because the, the pressure isn't as high, the pressure then increases as the star shrinks and it ignites a new kind of fuel. And it can keep doing this trick as the star gets more and more desperate uh, up to iron. And beyond iron, it can't uh, do this anymore because it actually takes energy to fuse iron. You don't get in that energy out. So when you get to this phase, uh, in fact, the last phase is silicon burning, and that happens in about a day in the life of the star. It uses up all its silicon. It's left with an iron core, and this collapses. When that collapse happens, depending on the mass of the star, it can collapse down into a neutron star or into a black hole and in the process create a supernova. And that's what most people think of when they think of a supernova. It's a type 2 supernova, a core collapse supernova that creates a neutron star or a black hole. But of course, most stars are actually born in binary systems, so they have a, a, a constant companion. They go through life orbiting around one another in, in what's called a binary system. And binary systems, sometimes the two stars orbit one another very closely, sometimes they orbit one another very far apart. But the ones that orbit one another very closely um, can actually exchange material and frequently do. So one of the stars may evolve and become a red giant and then material will spill over from it onto the other star. There's also a type 1a supernova and those don't have hydrogen. That's, what, that's why we call them type 1a's. Those are a completely different kind of supernova. They are the explosion of a white dwarf star. A white dwarf star is like a star that is just a dense little ball that's only about the size of the Earth. It can be about the mass of the sun, but crammed into a space about the size of the Earth, and this is what the sun will be at the end of its life. The mass of the sun will shrink down into this little ball of electron degenerate material. If you try to add more mass to it, uh, as can happen in a binary system, so a system of two stars, where the white dwarf star can actually suck matter from the companion star, uh, or you could have two white dwarf stars that merge. If in some ways you make the white dwarf star try to get bigger, then it will explode into a type 1a supernova. Sometimes you get a build-up of material which becomes unstable and you get, you get an, an explosion, either through massive release of uh, nuclear energy, there's, there's new fuel being supplied to the star and it can have another burst of nuclear energy generation and that produces novae or you can sometimes get the two stars actually merging with one another to produce a more massive star which may collapse and produce a, a supernova so these 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 are very sort of spectacular fireworks in the sky and those are the supernovae that are the brightest and they're the most standard of supernovae and so we can use them to figure out distances in the universe. We use them as standard candles. When stars get close to that limit, they actually ignite the carbon that's in that star. So it's a carbon and oxygen white dwarf. And when it gets close, 
the temperature gets high enough that carbon ignites, and that produces a runaway thermonuclear explosion that just blows up the whole star. So sometimes these are called thermonuclear supernovae. And in the process, that fusion wave goes through the star and burns it to heavier and heavier elements, kind of like what happens in the last, the final stages of stellar evolution in the star. But it happens in a, a second or two in this white, white dwarf star. And the elements burn to heavier and heavier elements, and you start off with carbon and oxygen, and you end up with something that is, in the core, the densest regions, it produces nickel-56. And nickel-56 is uh, an isotope of nickel, so it's just like the nickels in uh, American change, except that it's radioactive. When it decays, it gives off photons, and these photons are what power the supernova. So what we're seeing in the supernova as it brightens and fades over the course of a month or so is not the actual explosion energy, but the radioactive decay energy from the material that was created in the supernova. We can calculate how much is generated in this supernova. And in a normal type 1a supernova, if you could convert that to actual nickels, the equivalent in US dollars is about 12 no million dollars. So that's like uh, 12 times 10 to the 30, so 10 with 30 zeros. That's about how much a type 1A supernova would be worth, or about the same as the current economic crisis. <laughs> but, but actually, it just goes away because the nickel decays into iron. Black holes are not generally dangerous, just make sure you stay a safe distance from them. <laughs>